and giving us so much feedback and advice on what we were playing earlier today. And I wonder, I wonder if you'd start by telling us a little bit about um, how you decided that you wanted to play pipes. Well, to be honest with you, James, I, I never decided anything. It just, from the age of three, my mother told me that I lost many, many sets of tongs from the fireside. I used to put string or a bit of ribbon on them and put them on my shoulder and at the age of three or four and I lost lots of tongues over the croft and I'm supposed to be a great piper in my own head. <laughs> and anything that my father did, I copied him as a okay. child and of course he played the chanter quite a bit and I, I started picking up all the tunes he did by ear. And then my uncle, my mother's brother, it taught me the doublings and the grace notes and the, all the things that you need. What was his you know, name? Angus Campbell. Angus Campbell. Yes, he was the Campbell side and of course the McDonald side, my right. dad's side. Yeah, he was, he was a piper. He was a very, very famous piper among, the, among his era, like Robert Reed and, and Willie Ross and lots of... He only ever went to the mainland once to compete. Really? Yes, and he was second to Robert Reed wow. in the Open people in Oban. In Oban? Yeah, that's no. the only time What was your father's name? My father's name was Archie MacDonald. Archie MacDonald. And my, my uncle who taught me most of my people and so on was Angus Campbell, my mother's father. Now, is, was he any relation to Angus? The Angus McCampbell, Angus Campbell's for Walter Sterling? Oh, no, 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 just the same name. But, just the same name, yes, but yes. we weren't related to that. And who did Angus Campbell study with? John McDonald of uh, Inverness. So when John McDonald was doing the classes, classes himself, he was, yes. he was part of that. Yes, and when they left the class, every man that could blow a pipe went to the class. Yes. No matter what the weather. Yes. And there were very, very few cars, so they walked miles to go to John McDonald. And uh, when they left the class, they joined a band, and when you reached your house, you fell out. Uh, and my dad and his father-in-law were the last they played uh, together. Because wow. one lived on one side of the road and the other on the other side of the road. Yeah. And what, what was his father-in-law's name? Neil Campbell. Neil Campbell. Yeah. My brother Neil was named after him, and Neil was a good piper as well. There was a postman in Dalborough, Neil the Post. Was he any connection? No, uh, there was Willie Walker was a... a All right. And when my husband, his first visit to South was he comes from Kent in England, of oh, course. Oh, yes. And uh, on a Saturday, my father used to get the Open Times, and it had lots of... It was a wee bit like um, the Piping Times. There was always letters about Pipers oh, in the yes. Open Times. Oh, yes. And my father got a complimentary copy for some reason. Anyway, the post always came on a Saturday. And the first Saturday when my husband was there, the, the van stopped at the door and he came in and he flung off his hat and he picked up the chanter and he started playing it. Tony looked at me and he said, that's the postman. I said, I know that's the postman. That's Willie. He's a cousin of ours and he gives us a tune and a cup of tea and that's him. Finished his day's round. <laughs> <laughs> and in school, when, uh, when, you know, I'm quite sure it happens here, you collect for war veterans and, mm -hmm. and lifeboat men and people like that. Right. Uh, the children in school used to go around with uh, a box and call in every house and you'd get so much from them and, and every house I used to do a, a girl, a friend, Agnes Curry, she was a lovely Highland dancer and every house we went to I'd be given the chanter, she'd get up and dance and we got more money for, out for the charities. Wow. <laughs> every house had a chanter. And we, we'd be floating in tea and cake. <laughs> oh, no, we got tea and cake in every house. Because you go and have a tune. Because we, we had a, a tune and tea dance. Oh, wonderful. 
Mm -hmm. Now, you, you took lessons from someone else a little later in life, you were telling me, as like a seven or eight year old, maybe ten year old? Oh, yes, the uh, pipe major Robert Nickel. Robert Nickel. Okay. He came to the, to, in, in the summertime and he had classes twice a, I think it was twice a week he had classes. Okay. And we all went to his class and, and he was a very good teacher. And Mrs. I remember. Bob Nickel. Bob Nickel. Bob Nickel. Bob Nickel. Yes. And uh, I remember he started me off on the Viscount of Dundee. Yes. I was only about 14. And I said, please, sir, I don't like the tune. Can I do something else? <laughs> and he said, no, you're going to learn this one first. And I learned the tune, I learned the tune now. Because it oh. was one of his own favorites. And, and you got it so young that you probably play it really well. Yeah. Do you remember any of it? That's the taxes you're singing. Eh? You're singing the taxes. Do they not start the, the same? It starts the same. So if it's Dundee. Thank you. Thank you. It's over when you're. Getting a yeah. wee bit of dementia, isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 I don't think no. so. <laughs> That's all right. I was thinking the same thing, actually. I was thinking the taxes at yeah. the same yeah. time. Well, well that uh, was a, also, I know that, that was a, the King's Taxes was a favorite of Bob Nichols, and I know it was a favorite of yours as well, because I listened to the School of Scottish Studies recording of you playing the taxes, and it was tremendous. It was tremendous. Mm -hmm. Is that, you've heard, yes. Have you heard the recording then? No. Well, it's on the, what's the proper pronunciation of that new website, Andolkis? Website? It? Don't ask me, it, you're asking the wrong question. Oh, I can't think of it just now. <laughs> and Topar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rona, I just had a curiosity. Earlier you mentioned some dancing. Would that have been, in South Uist, would that have been Highland dancing or step oh, dancing? Oh, Highland dancing. Highland at that Highland point, dancing. yeah, yeah. I was much older before I saw the the step dancing coming back from Canada, I think. Uh, another cousin, he, he's a very good dancer, he does step dancing. Uh, Frank McConnell, and he was over at Celtic Colors. Right. And when he went back home, he started classes oh, okay. of the step dancing, and there's loads of people mm -hmm. doing it. When you were younger, do you remember any older generation players or dancers talking about? Step dancing, more the style that is seen in Cape Breton today? No. Yeah. No. They it just has totally died dancing, out at that point. Yeah. Yes. The swords and Highland Fling and yeah. right. Sean Drews and stuff like that. Yeah, but by the time you were taking lessons from uh, Pipe Major Robert Nickel, it must have been about, it must have been during the time World War II was going on. Oh, it was finished. It was over. Oh, it was already over. Yes. Were, were a lot of the Pipers away to the war during the, the years of the war, during 39? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They yeah. were all more or less away. There was, I don't know if you've heard of D.J. McIntyre. His dad was a wood piper. He was there. And, and uh, oh, I can't remember all of them, but there was a load of men. And a, a load of them were caught at St. Valerie. Right. And they were prisoners of war. Right. Donald, uh, not Donald McLeod, Donald McLean, Donald McLeod. Donald he McLean escaped from Lewis. Lewis. Donald McLean from Lewis. Yeah. He kicked up such a stink as a prisoner of war, they gave him the pipes back, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> the pipes often, but oh. it was such a nuisance of a prisoner that they, to shut him up, they gave him back. back so I was told. But we, Donald, he escaped when they were marching into a prison camp. Right. And he was such a wee man and whether he got into a foxhole or something. I remember he, that story, yeah. yeah. But not even his wife knew how did he get back to Britain. No, yeah. he never told how he did it. Never told anybody? No. Interesting. So did you go around and play at the games as a, as a young yes. girl? Yes. And nobody had a problem? Oh no, not in used. Not in Not in South Hughes, no. Everybody and his granny could play in Hughes. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and nobody would care so long as they played well. And, 
Right. And uh, for for me, it was playing in the US was more nerve wracking than playing anywhere else because everybody was so knowledgeable. Right. Yeah. And everybody knew you. Yes. And they knew where you lived. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So, what what kinds of tunes would you play as a as a young girl when you were competing as a youngster in South Uist? Uh Well, more just like my playing of Penny Cross and right. Leaving Glen Urquhart and the Breeze of Brecklet and and the Seventy Fourth Royal to Edinburgh and the tunes like that, quite heavy tunes, Bonnie yeah. Anne. And, yeah, those um, are fairly heavy tunes. Yes, and good competition tunes. Yeah. So, um, and you'd play Peabrock, obviously too. Yes, it took me a while to get the the curl of the you know the the music of the the when I was a child I thought that it stayed forever on one note. Mm -hmm. Of course, <laughs> that was not getting the the melody. I wasn't getting the melody, and my mother caught me. We didn't have electricity, and and my mother caught me with a pebra book and a torch in bed, and I'm going to school tomorrow. Oh. And she'd take the torch off me and she would say, next time I catch you, I hope it's a prayer book and not a pebra. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's a difference? <laughs> there was no difference really, is there? No. <laughs> <laughs> so what kinds of tunes would you play? What kind of pebra would you play? Uh, well, I lived the King's Taxes and I think when... And Macintosh's Lament was the first one I learned. Yeah. And uh, there's a grace note on the first variation. Some pipers still play te -de -te -ha, the great yep. note on the E. Yes, yes, yes. That's what my Uncle Angus said. Yes. And that's what John MacDonald in Venice taught. Yes. And uh, and of course he was a god to my Angus Campbell too. If he if you didn't do a John MacDonald, don't bother playing for me. That was <laughs> that <laughs> Anyway, um, my dad said to me, Why don't we go to the, uh, Shani Rajan had retired from the police area with John and see see how he'll play the, the big spree. Not the big spree, but the uh, Macintosh. And, uh, and he put the grace note on the F. And the day that my uncle was being buried, the priest who buried him said to me, you know, you lost out on his uh, will. Because you put the grace note on the F note on the E. That's right. <laughs> One grace note and I lost out on... You're the, kidding. Yeah. Well, that's what he told me. But I don't oh, think he had that much to leave anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, when you don't have that much and it all comes down to one grace note, I mean... You know. Shona, when... Uh, Rona, when you were... Um, when you were younger, do you remember any of the older generation players uh, talking about the Peabrock style being different before John McDonald of Inverness came and taught in the islands? No, I don't think so. It was, in South Hughes it was John McDonald or nothing, as far as the Peabrock playing was concerned. The, the, older, the older generation, like my father's generation, generation before me, they were all steeped in John McDonald in Inverness. So no one ever talked about the previous style being different in any way? No, but Alan, Alan MacDonald, you know, of Glenwood, the yes, famous yes, brothers yeah. from Glenwood, he studied a lot of that and, and he said that, you know, when landowners, the, the lords of the Isles and so on, when they, they had a piper and a bard and a harpist at their beck and call, and they changed some of the people from the old, old style because they didn't like it, so the piper had to do what he was told, apparently. Allegedly, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably how it was, you know, changed. Aye. Because Alan can play uh, the very, very old style. He's a very interesting, interesting man. He's gone into all that kind of stuff very deeply. Yeah, as, yeah. as a matter of fact, as on his album, I require the, the I require all the kids to read the the liner notes yes. to the album to Dystrom. Yes. Um, because it's such a good synopsis of that yes. time period where people said, you know, you would do what you were told. Told, and, yes. And be at the beck and call of the Lords of the Isles and if this is the way we want to hear it, this is the way you'll play it. Yeah. And there's also a lot fair bit in there about 
competing and the politics of competing and how that has impacted piping. I wonder what yes. your thoughts are on that. Do you think that that's uh, well, uh, it's there's the competing pipers association now, and there's the judges have a CPA. The CPA yeah. list, and uh, they discuss. Well, they're not supposed to, or they to tell their fellow judge if one of their pupils go up in front. You know, right. you have to say that I have an interest in this, in this pipe, so uh, I leave it to you to. To judge him. Right. Uh, it's a much fairer way of doing it because it was in the old days. I, I was told that a piper got a prize because he had a beautiful pair of kilt socks, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. <laughs> and I, I, you know, your story about. Willie Ross getting a prize and he didn't even come to the games. Yes, that's when John McGraw, he wasn't even there and he was first in Sydney. First in Sydney. Amazing. <laughs> he wasn't even present. So when was the first time you went off the island to compete? Um, I competed once in, in the Houston Barra in Glasgow. Okay. But that was used again, South Houston Barra Association. So they were fine with a woman playing. Um, if you, uh, when I was competing, if you won the open P block, that would be against the well. The, that was your Donald McLeod's and right. and all of these. James McNeil was there. Now, if you won, if you won the open P block, you were alleged eligible to play for the Brattachberam in London, right. and I achieved that, but when it came to be allowed to play, no, they wouldn't let me play. Was that the one where you sent the, the entry fee in and they wouldn't refund it to you when they, they said you yes, couldn't play? Yes, they still owe me 300 pounds. No, <laughs> 300 pounds. Three, three pounds. Three, three pounds. Three pounds sterling, which is what? Plus interest. Two, Plus, plus interest for many years, years, yes. Back, a few years back, three yeah. pounds was yeah. quite was a bit of money. It would be, yes. well, it would be probably... We should think about sending them a bill, maybe. <laughs> back then, it would be about $30. Oh, yeah. A pound was very valuable then. Yes, yes, yeah. there you are. They still owe me that money. They never paid it back. So, and then, <laughs> you, you played at the Northern Meeting and at the Argyleshire Gathering, too, yes? I never played at the Argyle Gathering. Oh. I wasn't allowed. They wouldn't. They wouldn't allow. They wouldn't no. even accept your registration. No. Did you ever try to? Uh, did you ever try to uh, decoy them just by maybe putting R McDonald or something yes, else? Yes, I was a wee bit fed up with myself that I didn't do that for London. Right. And if I arrived down in London, how I discovered that they weren't going to let me. I met one of the bikers who was going there. I just happened to bump into him. And he said, did you hear back from London? And I said, no. Oh, he said, we've all heard back from London. Have you not? I said, no, you better phone them. So I phoned and asked to speak to the president of the London Society, and he wasn't available. Yeah. And I said, I'll wait on the phone until he is available. <laughs> However, he didn't come to speak to me. He was from Sky as well. Uh, it didn't come. Was Alan. Yeah. Um, I think it was name in a minute. Yeah. Uh, Alan. Alan was his first name. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, as the secretary, a lady came to say, "I'm terribly sorry, but we, you can't come to play here." I said, "Why not? Because of because it's a, you're a woman. So we, hmm. we we do not." Ex but what year was that? Um. I think it was 1970, 69. Oh, jeez. I was thinking this was the 50s. Oh, oh no. Alan Beach. Jimmy. Alan Beach. You're Alan definitely Beach. recording, yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right, sweet. My battery's starting to go. However, uh, then the Sex Discrimination Act came in, and m many letters. Uh, uh, James McNeil said to me, we'll take the whole thing to court. He wanted a fact. I said, I wouldn't dream of it. Don't be silly. He, he said that because he wanted you to play, or he didn't he probably want you to play? He, wa he, he didn't really want me to play, I don't think, because he wasn't that nice to me. The following year, or the year after that, when they had to allow me to play, 
I, I said to myself, I better go now since I made a stink about it. I better go and play now. So I went down and that's the time he said to me, uh, he had written, excuse me a minute, he had written an editorial in the Piper Times advising and it was a very, very good uh, write-up how to put the Piper, the competing Piper, at his stroke, her, at ease. Uh, and how to be nice to them and take away their nerves and so on. But when I went down, he was the principal judge and it was his turn and he gave me, I got a kiss of the king's hand and it's one of my favourite pebrocks. And I was very happy and I turned to go up onto the platform and he called me back and he said, you're going to play the, I got a kiss of the king's hand and I said, yes. He said, how many times are you going to play it? And I'm saying to myself, that is very unfair and that's nasty to say that to me. You know, that's yes. taking away your comfort. I yes. said, I'll attempt it. There's no classical music played twice right. in one recital, is there? Oh. Not even big music from oh, Jack and Mozart and all these fellows. Right. Anyway, uh, I said, I shall attempt it once, can you play it yourself? And then I said, on my way to the platform, ta-ta prize. <laughs> <laughs> but I played it anyway since I made a stink the year before. Yeah, good for you. And, uh, and you played at the Northern Meeting? I played once at the Northern Meeting and that was another... It wasn't a fun day, but... Uh, it came to the marches and when it was my turn, there was, there was a piper already playing, you had to play the march twice. You had to submit what, four or something, the marches. You got one to play and you had to play it tw twice. Anyway, um, the fellow running the show, he says, you're not properly dressed, you can't go up and play like that. And I was dressed like a Highland dancer except that I had shoes uh, instead of pumps, you know, the dance with the little pumps. Up. And I said, what's wrong with me? He says, I had a waistcoat, a, a velvet waistcoat with the silver buttons and so on. Anyway, he said, you haven't got a sleeve. And there was a sleeve in my blouse with a frill round the wrist. I said, well, if it's a jacket, I have to. I've got a jacket. It's the same as this, but with a sleeve. I'll go home in a taxi and I'll get the jacket and I got the taxi and I went home and I came back and when I came back he says, you've missed your turn in the marches. I said, oh don't worry about it, I'll go on last. No, he says, you can't change your position, you can't play. No. Hmm. Well, it was then it hit about. me that that was his excuse to keep me up to the competition. It really had nothing to do with waistcoats or jacket? A boy in a Bremar, one of the, you know, up on the East Coast, big competitions there. Uh, she was going to play and it was raining and all the men were allowed to wear their cape. And the fellow said to her, you can't wear the cape. She says, excuse me, all the, all the pipers are wearing a cape. He said, you can't wear it because you're a woman, you can't wear the cape. So she was supposed to go up there and get soaking wet. Hmm. Um, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's modern day. Because yeah. I would like to day. say, and Roland, you've heard me say this to you before, on defense of my teachers, Robert Brown and Robert Nickel, from the time I went to them, your name would come up, and it came up in this context. Rona, you're, before you were married to Tony Lightfoot, your name was Rona McDonald, and they said, Rona McDonald is an excellent player, and if she were ever allowed to play for the medals at Open Inverness, she would absolutely win them. And that was the opinion of my teachers, and they were fully believed in your abilities as a musician. Here, here for women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they did not have that uh, 
warped prejudice, those two men. Yeah. They recognized you as a musician. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate that there were people in, in positions of authority that didn't get the message. And Do you think I'll, there's I'll still paraphrase there? you just a little bit. And if you'll forgive me doing that, but you said it wasn't the good pipers that had any objection. It was the mediocre pipers that yes. had objections. Yes. I, my life experience has supported that point of view. The, the negativity comes from the mediocre, yes, not the from the great think musicians. They do, but they're not. The great musicians rec recognize a, an excellent musician, and there's no questions asked. Yes. And that's the way it should be. Of course it is. Yes. Yeah. So you, you mentioned a little bit about you know what Faye has had happened to her in the recent in recent times. And it wasn't Faye, it was her mum, Patricia. Patricia. When she was competing. Ah, uh, it wasn't okay. Faye. Did I call her Faye? You yeah. did. Do, do oh, you sorry. think Patricia? Okay. It was the mother. Do yes. you think people are, have, have learned their lesson a little bit? Or do you think it's still, there's still an undercurrent? Of I, I, do, I don't think there's anything like that with the competing pipers now. Okay. I think they accept that uh, pipe, pipers are musicians. Right. And it's got nothing to do with your gender. You, uh, if you're a good player of any instrument, you should be listened to. I think. Of Willie Ross and my great grandfather and people from that era, and they seem to play the marches a lot faster. Yes, but and I... And just bays a lot rounder. Yes, but I think it was the type of recording. So do you think they still play them the way they're being played now? Yes, if you heard them in the flesh. Oh, I see. You know, they, if you heard them proper, I think it was the recording. Got it. Uh, because I heard, a, a, you know, a real to real thing right. that yes. they had at the beginning. Yes. I heard myself from that and I went like the clappers. You know, it was so fast. I was saying, I never played like that, never. Right. But when they're and they're at the correct speed, they, so the expressivity of marches and stress bays and the oh, pointing yes. that yeah. we're playing now is similar to what it was when you were a child. Oh yes. Okay. Oh yes. Oh, that's yes. interesting. I'd always thought that they they went through sort of ebbs and flows and faster, slower, faster. Well, slower. there there was a, a time when. Uh, as you say, that there was a period it would be a wee bit faster. Yeah. Last year than it is this year, and the others, the other pipers. If somebody did it and he was famous, or sometimes the others followed him. Right. And and then the next year after that, or maybe two years later, we slower again. But yes. the music was still there. Yes. Do yeah. Do you find an uptick in the number of tunes you hear, Peabrook, you hear being played in the Cameron style? Well, how could I answer that? Because I, I'm not familiar with the with the Cameron style. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of John McDonald. Right, right. But I mean, so a tune that you were given, it was John McDonald of Inverness, and the way he would have expressed it. If you if you heard it played in a different style, um, do do you find that more people are playing differently than that? Well, there are people who, for instance, the Donald McDonald collection, right. that kind of thing. The, uh, I know that uh, one young, one young lady, uh, she 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 plays. What people? I can't remember the people she played, but uh, uh, I said to her, "There's something going wrong there." So she says, "That's a Donald McDonald collection," mm -hmm. which I didn't know about. Are we doing enough? Are we doing enough in, to protect John McDonald Inverness and the uh, legacy that was handed down to him from Callum Peebrook? Are we do, uh, are we doing enough to do to protect that, I or should so. we be doing more? Oh, I think you're doing. I think you're all doing very well. I, I, I fully agree with everything I heard here. <laughs> yeah. Every note of it. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, looking around the room, that's him. That's yeah. his teaching. There you go. You know. Well, <laughs> Good day. I have a note from Bob Nickel, and I don't know if Bob Nickel wrote it or John McDonald wrote it. It's a handwritten note, 
And the question that was asked is, how different were these styles of Pirac playing? Mm -hmm. And the comment is, the old pipers played more or less the same way. And I know in my life experience, when someone studies a subject and one person has a different way of approaching the subject, some difference, and another source has a, another different way, the pupils of that teacher very naturally begin to exaggerate the differences. Mm. Mm. And that, in a way, calls more importance to what they do because they're doing it differently from someone else. But there's a curious note from, it was taken from John McDonald, whether Bob Nichol wrote it down or John McDonald wrote it down, I have a copy of the note. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question was, how differently did the old pipers play their pea rock? And the comment was, they played more or less the same way with occasional, occasional differences. Mm. Uh, Donald MacLeod, this is the way I play it, but you play it your way. Yes, that's right. You mm. know. That's right. One might yeah. play, he would say, one might play it. A different way. way. Not trying to say you can only play it this way. One might, might play, play it this way. Yeah. Yeah. One might hear, and then he would perform it the way he yes. did. It. Yeah, you you were a contemporary of Donald McLeod's, yes? Yes, totally. Yes. Yeah. She was a mere child, a mere infant, <laughs> when Donald McLeod was on the go. She was just a mere child. Oh, but I don't be know. careful how you use that word contemporary. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it takes on different meanings the farther away you get from it. More and more generations removed. But um, Ron uh, was just a little kid when the Oma Cloud was on the go. Did you ever have any lessons no. from him? Uh, no, not really, no. 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 Did, you, did you play for him at all ever? Oh yes, I played in the Villinger and Campbell. And I played in front of him in a competition. Yeah. And what did he say? What did he think? Uh, well, he was very pleased with what I did. Then. And the the first the first uh, the day that I had the, the run in with the fellow at the northern meeting, yes. he sent me home for my jacket. I wasn't going to. I got so fed up. I wasn't going to play in the jigs. That was the, coming to the end of the day. And some friends I'll go on go on do it. So I went up and I played in the jigs, and I got third. Yes. And when it came to when it came to presenting the prizes, I think it was Jimmy McGregor who won the gold medal for the third in the jigs. I got a bit bigger uproar of an applause than the fellow who won the gold medal <laughs> <laughs> because I was the first woman to to play in the in the northern meet. Yes. That was that was the first, uh, and I, I was given the large sum of a. Five pound note, a five pound check, <laughs> and it was uh, Lady Grant or whoever she was presented me with the prize, and I said thank you very much. I shall never spend it, and I never have. You never have. You still have it. Huh? I still have the check. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it's incredible. Rhoda, <clears throat> it's been. Uh, it, this is more of a comment than a question, but it's been really fantastic seeing you uh, involved in some. Uh, very modern projects, things that come to mind like the Highland Sessions or um, a brand new one, uh, Bridget Campbell's album. Oh yes, uh, she's, a, she's a lovely player. Yeah, she really is. Uh, maybe you can just uh, speak a little bit about uh, the, the current folk scene uh, as far as uh, pipes and Gaelic being used more and more in in folk, folk clubs and folk groups. Oh yes, and I think, uh, thinking of, of Alan MacDonald again, that, that family kind of started all of that, started the, the pipes with other instruments, and Alan and Margaret Stewart made two records, two CDs, and they're beautiful, they've got Pibra uh, songs, and the Pibrach as well. And my mother told me many years ago that the song came first mm -hmm. and the Pibrach came after. Mm. And uh, 
of course, after Colour and all these songs, thousands of them were lost. Yes. Because they weren't allowed to sing them or play them or anything. So. Do you have a beaver song that you could would sing? Well, the, the shortest song I know <laughs> is I got a kiss of the king's hand. And as you know, uh, I think it was about a thousand gays, a thousand highland chaps went down to help Charles, Charles, II. Charles II in, in yeah, 1761, six, uh, something like that. And the Battle of Worcester, it was yes. anyway, in England. And I don't know if they won the battle or not, but the king came over and asked, why is that man wearing a, a hat and the rest of you are bareheaded? He thanked them for going down to help him in the battle. And uh, he was introduced to the king as, uh, this man is the best piper of all of Scotland and his name is John Macrima. And the king said, you may kiss my hand, because I'm an overnice king. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, generations after that, uh, John Macrimmon's descendant composed the Pibrach, I got a kiss of the king's hand. And it goes in Gaelic. Wait a minute. Who had me pocus, pocus, poc? Oh, who had me pock a livery? Who had me pocus, pocus, poc? Oh, who had me pock a livery? Oh, who had me pock a livery? As had good and Christian curach nach a word and a hiljak me. Who had me pock as pock as pock? Oh, who had me pock a livery? And the only, that's I got a kiss, I got a kiss, I got a kiss of the king's hand. And the last line, no one who ever blew into a sheepskin got that honor but me. That's the. <laughs> 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 a great line that is. It's Just for those of you not playing sheepskin bags, the recruitments will disappear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My questions haven't been vetted. Can I go? Can I? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, something I'm very interested in is the sound of the bagpipe. And I remember when I was young, younger, not that long ago, I seemed to, it was very interesting to hear a really high level competition and how the pipers would all sound a little bit different. Yes. And nowadays, it sounds like they're sounding more and more the same. Yes. Do you, can you maybe talk a little bit about whatever you want, your bag, how you would set up your bagpipe or other bagpipes you remember hearing that were, well, I, sometimes I was, when, when it would draw, you know, a particular bagpipe was like, oh, that makes me excited about playing the bagpipe. Yes, Donald McPherson bag. Uh, bagpipe. Yeah. And Roddy McLeod, he's always got a smashing set of pipes. And Stuart Little, whose pipes do you hear better than that? And Willie McCall. That every competition you go to, there's not a bad pipe among them. They're fantastic because of the, well, the technology and the, you know, the different weeds you can buy. And when you think of it in my era, you had to season the bag. It was a pain. Roddy, well, Roddy still has to season his bag. Pardon? I think Roddy still has to season his bag because I think he's still yeah, committed he's probably to back, Some of them go back to the yeah. sheepskin yeah. Yeah. because the, the music is, they reckon it's more mellow and yeah, baby. melodious. Right. 
and and it's particularly the big drone they usually use the cane, maybe the the plastic ones right. in the in the two yeah. fenners, but in the base drone they quite often use a, a cane drone in competition that right. is. So do you personally just as a matter of preference, do you prefer the sort of big bold base of a Robertson or the big blend in a Henderson or the quieter, mellower McDougal's. Which one do you personally... That's very difficult. That's yeah. very, very difficult. I mean, they're all beautiful, right? Yes. But when you, yeah. Which ones do you hear? Do, like what Dan asked you, which ones do you hear that make you go, oh yeah, okay, there it is. That's a beautiful bagpipe right there. The one that Donald was playing today, that's... Yes, that's, that's the Henderson's. Henderson's. Uh, that's Henderson. Henderson. Yeah. That's a smashing. Yeah. They were very, very beloved, the Henderson bagpipe. Some yeah. the, and some were issued in the military in the regiments. And yeah. some of the papers came back from the regiments with those pipes. Yeah. The McCard chanter in that bagpipe was pretty good too. That was Ian's <laughs> father's chanter that we heard today. Yeah. Tell your father that we liked his chanter. We have a dozen for sale. Yeah. This is Ruby. Oh, this is the one that yaps a wee bit. Yes, this is the yippy dog. Yeah. Doggy yippie close up. Boy. What breed is that? She's an Italian greyhound. Oh, right. So my wife is Italian, and I'm oh. Scottish. Oh, right. So we have an Italian greyhound and a Scottish deerhound. <laughs> and my wife likes the Scottish deerhound better too. Oh. <laughs> she's a good dog, but she's a little misbehaved. Oh, she's so pretty. She is. She's a lovely. We like. Yeah, she's she likes to sit on laps, <laughs> but she's favorite peabrook to hear. Favourite pre-brook to hear, well, I got a kiss of the king's hand, it's a hot favourite on the big spree. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love the big spree, I think it's a super... Did you get that too um, from Bob Nicholl? No, I got oh. it from Anne Glantz. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, favourite March? I love that tune. Favourite March, yeah. favourites just say favourite reel to hear. That's, it's very difficult. There's, you change every week. <laughs> What's this week's? Current favorite. Current this week's favorite. favorite. Well, this week's favorite is probably McLean of Pennycross. McLean of Pennycross won me quite a few prizes. Okay. And my stress pay would probably be, although I'm not very good now at playing it, Dora McLeod. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, John Roy Stewart. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's a, it's a terrific tune for a, for a dancer and, you know, it's got a great lift in it. Yes. And the reel would be Pretty Marian. Yeah. Can you give us a couple of bars? Oh, crikey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said to you already, <laughs> The spirit is willing, but the flesh is very weak. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Can't even blow the thing. Wait till I find the holes. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to put? The McLean of Benny? Sure, pretty, yeah, or, pretty or, or yeah, pretty merry. <laughs>
left out a bit, didn't you? The one used to be his heart, he hopped to it. Aye, aye. 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 now that you just played because I hadn't seen you play earlier. Um, how common was it for people to play left-handed when you were growing up? More, more Most people. Uh, there, there, there were quite a few. There was Willie Van Bekele. Um, Roddy, uh, Roddy Don McLean of Lewis. There was Roddy Rocha. Yes. Roddy McDonald. Are you a left-handed person? Right? Uh, and no, I'm so right-handed ever since my right hand side, that side. I was I was telling Jim earlier on if I've got a bag of groceries, I can't put the key in the door with that hand. I can't put the thing down and put the key in that hand. So you're right handed but you, I'm terribly right handed. But why do you play that way? I'm so well but that's not left handed playing, that's just You just call it left handed, call it left handed. Like I know left handed people who play that way. Right. South well if Chinese you look at movie. old pictures from the world, it's back yeah. from the Four thirties and fifties and sixties, right? Easily a third of the players, maybe more, were playing with their pipes over the other shoulder. And if you look at any of the defensive pupils, most of them are playing. So and you were saying you were saying that that happened because of the army. Which common? Well, right, the they, they didn't one. look good. Well, so no, I was a know. flautist for thirty years. A what? Flautist. Oh. And everybody, every oh. flute player, plays to this side. Every single one. Right. Right hand left, yeah. and this is on the top, and this, and then you take the pipes, you put them down here. Now this makes sense to me because. But all that what Rona was saying before was that that's exactly what the army did. Is the army standardized? So I said, well, then, okay. So just to finish my last rapid fire questions, favorite horn pipe and favorite jig, and favorite six eight. No, my goodness. Uh, favorite six eight. Um. Favorite medley from the uh, <laughs> Favorite medley. <laughs> Favorite jig. Crossing the minches. Crossing the minches. Oh, Crossing the minches. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the hammer on the anvil. Yeah. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't. Yes, I was Don McLeod. It was top of the pops with the oh, young pipers and used when he wrote it first. Yes. Oh, yeah. everybody put up a set of pipes. Ah. They would play the hammer and the anvil. I was coming into the city of Glasgow after being home and used uh, on holiday from, I was a student. And my brother was to meet me at Queen Street Station. Okay. And it Sounds was right. absolutely packed with people. And it's not the layout it is now. Everything was very ickety pickety, you know. Yeah. The, and I couldn't find my brother. He said to me that he would meet me. I got near my brother. And uh, I'm never going to find him in this crowd. So I started, and taro, and taro, and people were looking at me as if I was nuts. <laughs> and I had. From the corner, and ta -da, ha -da, ha -da. <laughs> <laughs> and so you just zeroed in That's on the, it. That's what Zoom did on the on the hammer fun. in the end. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> That's Favorite, how we found each other. Favorite Gaelic singer. Favorite Gaelic singer. That's a difficult one. I've got I know. a few. Yeah. Oh, I'm not well, Jim asked you a whole mess of difficult questions, so I'm only asking you the one. <laughs> I like Margaret Stewart singing, mm -hmm. I like Mary McInnes singing, I like Christine Primrose singing. Yes. Uh, oh, I don't know. Sheena McIntyre singing. And I love Paul McCallum singing. Ah, you know okay. Paul McCallum? Okay. No, what about uh, Isabel McCaskill? Is Isabel McCaskill, yeah. she was a lovely singer. Oh, yes. She was a lovely singer. Well, wonderful. Uh, Rana, thank you for coming and answering all our questions. And I, 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 I've never had such a ball in all my life. <laughs> <laughs> a wonderful time. Thank you.